Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have my next to last review for Nightmare on Elm Street. This one's kind of not fair because I'm doing Friday the 13th. Currently right now I'm starting to watch those movies again, like I try to do every year. I miss a lot of the time, but I try to every year. Anyway, uh, in this box set, the last disc in this collection is Freddy vs. Jason, which came out in 2003. Let me tell you a little bit of backstory about J Freddy vs. Jason for me. Now, I knew nothing about this movie. I knew nothing about it. And I was relatively a horror fan at this time. This was probably when I was 9 or 10, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, right about almost 10 years old. 2004 would have made me 10 years old, later that year. So I was roughly about nine years old. And I remember this was right on the border of the time my parents were about to split up. And I remember going to my grandparents' house uh, not too far away. And we were all having like a family get together. It was like the last one we had before my, my parents split up. And I remember the TV being on the living room. And I remember a commercial coming on that was very red and white and blue themed, particularly red and blue in different shots. And uh, there were these two horrific icons that I knew of, but I had not really seen much of yet. I had knew of Jason Voorhees by different things I had seen about him online at the time and just different like little things I had seen in horror films and seen on TV during AMC's marathons of the different Friday films and whatever. I don't know how much Jason I had seen at that time, but I knew about him is all I remember. And then Freddy Krueger, I really started watching those movies probably when I was 11 or 12, so not too long after that. Regardless though, uh, I started to see these trailers there, and I remember being in the room, it was kind of, you know, the lights were a little dim, and all the lamps were on in my grandparents' house at the time in that particular room. Everybody pretty much went to, kitchen, to the kitchen to get food, and I'm watching this commercial on TV, and it scared the shit out of me. I mean, just for some reason, you're a kid, you see something that horrifically violent in a trailer alone for TV on cable, and it kind of surprised me a little bit, and I was so stoked to see what could come after this. Immediately, the one I was the most exposed to that I've been watching since I was like seven years old was Michael Myers on Halloween. I'm sitting there thinking, when are we going to have Michael Myers cross over with like Chucky or Jason? Like that'd be an ultimate monster movie type of thing. Didn't understand rights or copyright or anything like that. It didn't matter at the time. Uh, Hollywood was one big entity when I was a child. Anyway, so Freddy vs. Jason comes out. Of course, I miss it by a few years, probably about 2007 I want to say 2006 somewhere in there when it started coming on TV at one point I finally watched it I believe uh, I might have even seen it on VHS with my mom at some point I might have seen that now that I think about it uh, anyway I saw this movie at some point I'm fairly certain it was either cable or VHS and it was so much fun and now 2022 almost 20 years later I still love this movie I still think it's got some flaws, some very small flaws, but it still has to be taken into factor for the rating and so on and so on. I still think it's so much fun. And having so much just fun with a movie, it's something we don't do anymore. If this came out now, we would do everything we, could, we possibly could to make it scary and maybe a little bit mildly adventurous, you know, like a Godzilla versus Kong type of thing, which I love that movie, it's still. Uh, I felt like we would have went the wrong direction if this had come out at any point other than 2003, whether it be before or after. We could have done it completely wrong. It could have been filled with uh, nothing but politics now. It could have been ruined. And I remember after the movie coming out, seeing these fake posters online for Freddy vs. Jason 2 and how deeply, deeply in my soul I wanted that. It never came to happen, of course. We had some comic books like uh, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, which I've never seen, never read, want to, and probably never will. I've seen a lot of cool things that have spun out of this that a lot of people really want. Alien vs. Predator came out not too long after this, a few years. Uh, Requiem after that, which is a horrible mess. But I haven't seen either of, the, either of those in forever, so I need to rewatch them at some point. I think they're actually sitting right here on my shelf beside me. Anyway, <clears throat> so Freddy vs. Jason, I went into it this time around for this marathon after a few years of not watching it, along with these movies where I was kind of like, you know, am I really going to love it this time around? I remember there being some rough CGI, and there is, but most of it's great. <laughs> I love it. I think they nailed it perfect. There were some terrible, terrible ideas from the Camp Crystal Lake memories and the uh, Never Sleep Again documentaries that I saw, talking about how they came across script ideas for this movie. There were so many script ideas for this particular movie, this event. This is an event, let's be honest. This is like a boxing match. They did a whole, like, boxing match thing as a as a meeting like for the fans before this movie came out there was so much to talk about 
And even now, I still think there's a lot to really highlight and discuss how there's some great kills in here from both of these icons. Jason probably has even more in the film than Freddy, but there's so much great stuff from both of these horror icons that I love. Now, a lot of people were upset because Kane Hodder didn't come back to play Jason, you know, because Ronnie Yu, the director, didn't want him, uh, which I think was a smart choice. I don't think Kane Hodder's all that great. I'll be honest with you. A lot of people love him to death. I don't get it. <laughs> Kane Hodder's fine, depending on what we're talking about, certain elements to his movies, but I don't think he, like, made Jason who he is. Um, that's just my personal opinion as a Friday fan. It doesn't really mean much. However... That character doesn't talk, so Ken Kurtzinger plays in this time, and I think he did a good job, frankly. I really do. I still like him. Uh, Robert England, however, you need to play Freddy Krueger. I, I don't think anybody else could not play that role. I think there are people out there who could. Jackie Earl Haley, my boy, loved his role in the remake. Different type of Freddy, though. More dark, you know? But I think for this type of movie, you needed the fan, fan favorite, which was... Robert England, and he comes back for this too. The general plot for this movie is that Freddy is in hell, or something like it. I, I'm assuming it's supposed to be hell. And uh, he uses Jason to go to Elm Street and start killing people to make them afraid of Freddy again. Because basically the cops and everybody else kind of just took this come-to-life urban legend of Freddy Krueger and tried to box it away in the attic and make people forget about it. Everybody stopped talking about Freddy. People stopped talking about it in the news, which would never happen, but the police tried that out. And somehow in this world, it worked. Um, now, mind you, almost 10 years before, about nine, in 1994, we had New Nightmare, which I think sucked, frankly. So we had a few Jason sequels leading up into this movie. <clears throat> I think Jason X came out in like 1999 or 98, 2001, somewhere in there. And I personally like Jason X a lot. And going from Jason X being so campy and goofy and silly and comedic to this being wild and insane and over the top is a blast. Uh, there are some things that I think are a little bit out of character for Jason. For, for example, uh, he has an actual fear of water in this movie, which makes no sense. Uh, there's a couple of aspects in the old series that maybe he would be, but that's a thing in here. Even though this is a spoiler-free review, that's very much an element in this movie that he's afraid of water. Of course, when he was a boy, he drowned. But we've never seen him actually be afraid of water, you know? So that's a little bit odd. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, not really sure how much I like about that. Um, then we have, like, with, uh, well, for example, he would never leave Camp Crystal Lake, probably. And uh, he did here. <laughs> so he went to Elm Street for Freddy. And Freddy kind of manipulates him by pretending to be Betsy Palmer, which she was not in this, which was kind of sad. They had another actress playing her, which was kind of nice. Um... Robert England is a blast in here. His one-liners are wonderful. Uh, the gore in here, when you have it, is great. A lot of it's CGI. And then the CGI in the movie is horrible a lot of the time. It has not held up well, nor do I think it did back in the day when I was watching this on cable and VHS for the first time. It might have looked better on VHS. Some special effects do, like The Crow with Brandon Lee. Not everything does. Star Wars holds up a lot better on VHS. The original trilogy does, compared to what it looks like now on Blu-ray and 4K and stuff, in my opinion. Um, so, <laughs> for me, Ronnie Yu, I was a little worried about when I found out that he directed this, because <laughs> I never saw Bride of Chucky as a kid. I saw it probably when I was like 13, 14, when I really kind of got over my fear of killer dolls, and I love Goosebumps and Slappy and stuff, so that really kind of filmed that onward, fueled that onward, excuse me. At some point I saw Bride of Chucky, I think it's awful, and to this day I still think it's a bad movie. Uh, not as bad as Seed of Chucky, <laughs> But it's bad. Uh, seeing this guy pull through and make Freddy vs. Jason after Bride of Chucky is an amazing surprise, in my opinion. If you didn't know that, and you hated Bride and you went into this, dude, what a surprise. It's such a great flick. There's so much action and insanity. And it's the biggest thing I'd use with this film. The word that I'd use to describe it is insane. It's just, it's wild. It's a crazy movie. There's so much happening. Not really in a complex type of way. There's just so much happening. There's so many great characters in here that I want to get into in a moment. Um, th there's just so much over-the-top insanity. There's everything from Jason's straight-up slasher elements to Freddy's dreamlike qualities. And they're not as atmospheric as, like, the most of the Nightmare on Elm Street experiences, I would say. They're not really trying to do that. There's a couple of moments that are pretty creepy that involve dreamlike experience, and that's pretty nice. I like that. There are some nice surprises in here every once in a while. That really works out pretty well. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the human characters. Uh, Monica Kina plays our main character here, and she's beautiful. She's beautiful, man. 
Uh, we have a lot of other actors and actresses you've probably seen. We have a singer, Kelly Rowland, who's in this. <sighs> Kelly Rowland is the weakest in the film, easily, <laughs> hands down. I want to put my boy's name in here, the dude that I love to death. He's great in everything I've ever seen him in. Brendan Fletcher. Uh, he is fantastic. I love this guy. He's on the Rampage movies. If you haven't seen those, they are fantastic. He's so good. He's such a great, talented actor, and he can do everything from a serious role to a comedic role. And he's wonderful in this. John Ritter's son is in this, by the way. He's really good. There's so many great casting choices in here. Um, Catherine Isabella is in this. She's great. It's just surprising to me how much fun you can have with this movie, still to this day. If there's one kid in here that looks like Miles Teller a little bit, like a knockoff Miles Teller who looks like a knockoff John Cusack. It's very odd. <laughs> I think they're all related, even though no one will admit it. Um, there, there's some great just set pieces in here, especially in the finale, man. The finale is so good here. You may wonder too about Camp Crystal Lake since Jason leaves there to go to Elm Street. Uh, about half, if not two thirds of this movie take place with the Elm Street area and kind of in between there and Camp Crystal Lake. And then the third act is like entirely in Camp Crystal Lake, which is awesome. It's so awesome, man. Um, I love the finale. I think that it's a great solution for the fans with the outcome of who wins, Freddy or Jason. I think all of that works really well. The humor is top notch. There's one guy in here who reminds me of a knockoff Jack Black. Uh, the, the, there's a particular party scene that takes place in a crop field. That's great, too. There's just so much to talk about with this movie. It just works for me. I don't know if it's because it came out when I was like getting into my teenage years. That's when I saw it was like 11 or 12, my preteen era. I don't know what it was, but even people that I know that hate horror, that don't like either of these monsters, love this movie. That's true. That's a true story. I have people in my life who are like that, that I've shown this movie to and they loved it. Um, it's surprising to me, but that shows how much fun this is and how well made it is, in my opinion. Again, it has its issues with CGI aging and stuff. But man, most of it is just an absolute blast. I love it, and it's a fun time. If you like having just a fun time with movies, the Nightmare on Elm Street films are very much the series for you for that. Now, Friday is too, but for me, it's really encapsulated with Nightmare on Elm Street. To me, I consider this more of a Jason movie than a Freddy film, even though both of them have a balanced screen time as far as I'm concerned. I think they're both extremely important to the plot, even though the plot doesn't really make the, the most sense. But I've seen and reviewed things like Nightmare on Elm Street 4, where that concept for Alice doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Not a big deal. Don't really care so much. <laughs> I just wanted a fun movie to watch. And this one holds up. This one holds up so well. Now, I will say this. There is one character in here who reminds me too much of Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, <laughs> that's a little bit much, you know. But he works here. I like it. There's so much to enjoy about this movie. If you haven't seen Freddy vs. Jason, I really think you're missing out. There's a cool music soundtrack in here. Uh, it just, it works. In every way I could possibly have wished for it to work. If I had been a fan, a major fan of either of these franchises before I had seen this film, dude, I'm going to be honest with you, this is a great combination of those two, in my opinion, being a longtime fan now. I think even in hindsight, it holds up extremely well. I could not recommend it enough. Even if you haven't seen these movies, you have a family member who wants to see this flick but has never seen the other series, dude, check it out. Let them see it now. They don't need to. They'll love this. I promise you. It's one of the most surprisingly holds up well type of movies from the 2000s, in my personal opinion. Anyway, if I had to rate Freddy vs. Jason from 2003 on a five star basis, I think I would lean more towards giving this a four out of five stars. It's a classic. It's so much fun. It's insane. To me, it's like a lesser version of the fun I had with Terrifier. If you've seen Terrifier, you know how wild and crazy and bloody that movie is, how insane Art the Clown is. That is just a step above what I feel like with this movie. This movie has flaws, it has issues. Monica Kina is not great here. But everything else I think is fantastic. I think it's wonderful. There's a kill so often, it just has a great pace to it. Everything works, everything makes, makes sense within the context of the movie. Not so much outside of it involving the series, either one, but everything else in this movie, in context for itself, works for me. I think Ronnie Yu did a good job. I don't care what anybody says. I think even the look of the film, between the blues and the reds, it looks good, in my opinion. I really appreciate it. I'm glad it was made. I don't care what anybody else has to say about it. I think it's a blast. What are your thoughts on Freddy vs. Jason? Put your thoughts and comments down below once again. Four to five stars from me. Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you, and goodbye.